tell us a little bit about the tone of the conference today. It's been a very interesting conference, it, particularly with the uh, coincidence of the bad market. Uh, it's not something new, it's been going on for a few years, but the depth and the intensity makes today's conference uh, very applicable and of great interest to everybody. Bankers, ship owners, everybody. There's been a lot of talk about private equity today, and I know recently in the book Dynasties of the Sea, uh, you were quoted as saying sometimes private equity might not appreciate uh, certain aspects of the industry, uh, issues that are uh, important to uh, topics like crewing. Well, uh, you know, it's very simple really. A ship without a crew is zero, just as a ship without a crew is zero. It's, it, we need two legs to walk. Owners are one, crew is another. There's a position and a place for private equity as other things, but they need to understand that uh, a ship is only as good as the crew. And uh, because private equity hasn't been the dominant factor in ship finance, uh, it's a learning curve. I'm sure that they will change. You know, I think that really what happened is that so many people who entered shipping in the 2003-2008 boom uh, assumed that that was normalcy, whereas it's abnormal. I've been in shipping since 61 when I finished university. I think this is the eighth down cycle I've seen uh, of various intensities. But, uh, you know, people are what makes ships work. Ships are complicated. Almost 90% of world trade goes by ships. They're essential. They're never going to be replaced by something else. Uh, you know the old uh, line, the biggest airplane can't compete with the smallest uh, ship. What other big issues are facing crew right now? Well, uh, f without doubt in my mind, the uh, criminalization of uh, crew for uh, accidental ship side pollution. This is uh, uh, absolutely, and uh, that and piracy, they are the two burning issues today. Crew, I mean, for example, the Hebei Spirit, she was at anchor, she was a tanker, I believe with Hong Kong flag. Uh, Samsung uh, tug and heavy lift ran into her, 22,000 tons of cargo spilled, the crew in uh, prison for I think nine months or a year, uh, it was terrible. And there are many other cases that we can, uh, there's the prestige ongoing case which is in court at the moment, Captain Manguras has had nine years of his life uh, taken away. Uh, th there has to be a civil, human way of dealing with things. So who should be held accountable in these types of cases? I think that uh, it, what we don't need is knee-jerk reaction. And uh, countries the world over have been reluctant to provide uh, ports of refuge. Uh, we've seen a case now, I won't name the name, a few uh, months ago. It's becoming something which is necessary. And of course, politicians like to pass the buck and nobody wants to face it in their electoral year so it's uh, not a favorite topic on the other hand if I can uh, just say something if an airplane declared an emergency and an airport refused it permission to land or sent it away the government would fall the next day uh, with ships were the last uh, you know the, everybody considers the ship a cow to be milked and tell us what are we going to see from you in the future here, now that uh, you're passing the reins of uh, Intercargo? Are we going to see you getting back into the ship owning business? I've been looking at the market. I don't think we're at the bottom yet. I've been uh, talking with various yards for specifications. I've uh, invested in other things, in solar power, and we're looking at new uh, types of eco ships, which is the key. Because when I started working, many years ago, the cost of fuel was under 5% of the operating cost of a ship. Today it's 80%. So that's uh, eco ships are the key to the future. In the past, you've always talked about how impressed you were by Japanese yards, Chinese yards, um, developing technology and really working quickly and uh, overcoming learning curves. Um, do you think if you were to get back into, uh, uh, let's say, bulkers, uh, you know, in the future, uh, these are yards you would be talking to? Absolutely. I wouldn't have any hesitation with either Japanese or Chinese. Uh, I think that the owner's inspection team is a very important thing in ensuring the quality. 
uh, there's always an antithesis. The owner wants the maximum ship for the minimum dollars. The yard wants to deliver the minimum ship for the maximum dollars. That's where discussions, negotiations, and a win-win situation for both sides. If they want, as I always want, a long-term relationship with the yards that produce the ships for us. And are you keeping your eye on all of the major shipping sectors? Yes, I am. Uh, I've also got involved uh, with a uh, high technology company producing scrubbers. We're in the experimental stage because I'm very concerned and uh, environmentally sensitive. Uh, Captain Cousteau told me in 1974 that without the environment there's no tomorrow. He was right. He was the first person I ever heard use the word climate change and uh, we are seeing it now. The hurricane that we experienced in New York a few days ago was one of his predictions that the intensity, frequency, and number of hurricanes would be affected by climate change.